Lost control, did you, mate? Well, we've heard that one before. And as always, we're going to let YouTube decide. Hey guys, Eerie is here. Welcome back to the channel and thank you for choosing to join me here for another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related content, then subscribe now and click that bell icon as well so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So before we get into the juicy stuff and the reason why you're all here, let's set the scene. Now we had a great day of racing up to this point, rising up to our highest driver rating ever and had entered one final race, looking for one more good result before we called it a day. But one driver, the driver in the intro, was intent on not allowing that to happen. And as a self-appointed custodian of driving standards and racecraft here on GT Sport, I'm going to show you this today, and I honestly think it's one of the worst I've seen to date. The driver in question is gonna get things started early here on lap number one. Coming into the hairpin for the first time, keep your eye on the radar here. 11th is going to make contact with us right at the apex. Now that is instant number one of what was just the start of what turned out to be a race long battle, trying to avoid having my race ruined by the Belgian and the subject of this video, Mituel. And now although he got that started early, there's gonna be a small break here between now and the next instant. So I'm going to introduce the race here. We're here at what I think we all know by now is my favourite combination here on GT Sport. Suzuka in the Group 2 cars. Now, I don't know what it is about this combo that I enjoy so much. Maybe it's the nostalgia of the track. I remember as a kid watching Damon Hill clinch his F1 title here. Or maybe it's because I am fast here. Well, by my standards at least anyway. But either way... I absolutely love it and had increased my driver rating to over 60,000 by this point. But I'll speak to you all about that and what we're going to do with that and where we're going in the next video. So we have 10 laps here in this one. We have a choice of mediums and hards but the strap for this is a one stopper going from mediums and then staying on the mediums. There is no need for fuel in this one, we've got more than enough here so it's a flat out sprint the entire time. But now I've introduced the race, let's move ahead slightly here to the end of that lap. I am part of a large group of seven cars circulating very closely together. Everything is about to get very tight as we come into the Casio triangle. I go to go down the outside which looked like it was going to work as I was alongside and had the inside for the second part of the corner. That was until the Spaniard of course cuts off one ball leader up in front who has to slow down which meant we get Constantine it up and there is another, but much harder this time, bump from the Belgian behind. We managed to just about hold on to it as you could see, but that was instant number two already. And number three is coming right up. We're going to be absolutely barged out of the way here and down to 11th we go. Now, although there had been already three contact points in the first two and a bit laps, the jury was out at this point between whether he was just a clumsy driver or whether he was a dirty driver. I do not know which one it was, but all I know is that he was very annoying. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt as he goes wide here out of Dunlop and gets off the throttle indicating for us to go through. And as we go past here, his true colours are exposed and he hits us into Degna 1. Now I managed to just about hold on to it for a second time here, unlike the unfortunate Spaniard who wasn't so lucky and is off into the gravel tap at the second Egna. But it was all for nothing, as the penalty he then got lost in the place anyway and I went back through. So now, after the latest incident, we're on incident number four now, we know what this guy is all about. But as we saw, thankfully after he served his penalty there, he is now behind us. So I wanted to get my head down here and concentrate on making up positions rather than dwelling on what had happened earlier on in the race with cars that are now long behind me. So we got our head down as I said and made it through to the end of lap number 5 where we came in for some new tyres. And things were looking good here. As we come across the line to start lap number 7 the Greek is going to come out of the pits but that isn't the car we are going to need to concentrate on here. Keep your eyes on the Spaniard who has taken to the escape road after going wide. 
He's going to come back on and squeezes us to the point where we are left with less than the car's width. There is contact and we are forced off onto the gravel. It then takes what seems like an age to get back up to speed. I've pulled off on second to limit the wheel spin here and preserve the rears, which will save us some time in the long run by not having scorched rear tyres, but it did cost me some time in the immediate term getting up to speed. But by the time we were finally back up to speed, we found ourselves in 12th place and 3 seconds behind, yes you guessed it, the Belgian in 10th. We have about 3 and 3 quarter laps left to go in this one, so I'm going to get my head down once again to try and lose the German behind, put in some good laps and get after the guy in front to secure a top 10. Moving a little further on down the lap here, as we come through 130R the yellows are out as the Spaniard up in front has had a biggie as you can see here, arriving into the Casio triangle. And as we cross the line to start lap number 8, we're 2.9 seconds behind the Belgian now, who is in 10th, following us all being promoted by the spinning Spaniard. Crossing the line as we start the penultimate lap, lap number 9 I record my fastest lap of the race with a 149.7, and as a result the gap has come down to 10th place by 6 tenths to 2.4 seconds. So as we start the final lap here, we have recovered to just 1.6 seconds now behind 10th place. Only a few more tenths here and we'll be right in the slipstream. 8th, 9th and 10th are about to be joined by the Greek who came out of the pits in front of us earlier as he has gone wide into turn number 1, which is going to play right into our hands here. As you can see, he is holding up the Belgian in front. And as we exit the S's here and arrive at Dunlop, the gap has reduced to under a second, meaning we'll be now in the slipstream. Up ahead, the Belgian is going to throw it up the inside there. There is contact, the Greek almost goes off, but now we're on the pair of them and have a front row seat for the remainder of the lap, which is something to behold and the exact reason you have clicked on this video. The Belgian there is going to run wide coming out of Degna 2, which gives the Greek a run up the inside. The Belgian reacts late to it though and blatantly blocks him in the braking zone. There is contact, the Belgian goes deep and as a result, the Greek ends up up the inside. Now, we have seen this before, a few laps earlier when we went through we were then hit off, so I think we all know what's going to happen here. And as expected, the Belgian punts the Greek off at Spoon. In doing so, he too has run deep and I jump up the inside. Note though, there was no contact at all. And we're now up into ninth place. The Belgian has a four second penalty, quite rightly, to be quite honest, for smashing the Greek's back doors in there. With his previous history, I am concerned that he is a loose cannon and we are next. So I pull off the racing line, brake early to allow him around the outside, but then he brakes even harder, waits for me, jumps over the kerb to hit me, and round we go. And despite trying pretty much everything to avoid being taken out, he has taken us out. Now that leaves us to come across the line eventually to take 12th place. But I want you to cast your mind back to the intro, and the answer to my question, he said he lost control. Now, do you think he lost control? or do you think it was intentional? To help you decide, let's take a look at the replay here. So here we are on the replay. We're in chase cam looking at his view and we're gonna have a look at some of the incidents here. First one is gonna be coming into turn one here where you can see he's just gonna dive up the inside and barge us out the way. He's going to then, well, I thought anyway, going to let us through through Dunlop. Then just check out his throttle inputs. It's clear to me, and it's pretty indefensible, he's just gonna hit us off. Next one, well, this one's fairly clear for all to see. He is just gonna absolutely punt the Greek off coming into Spoon. That again is just indefensible. Now, the first two were bad, but this one really, really hurt. This one was the one that he said he lost control on in that PSN message. Keep in mind he has a four second penalty here for ramming earlier on at Spoon, so his race is done. So that all that can be achieved here is to ruin another driver's race. I go to the inside and break early to let him through. He breaks even harder, but then when the time is right, he floors it, 
jumps over the curb there to pit me into the gravel. Absolutely unbelievable. But guys, that's just my view. And now you've seen the replay, I want you to let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of that move. And was he really telling the truth when he said he lost control? Or did he just pump me off? I know what I think really happened. He definitely just punted me off. But as always, I'm keen to know your thoughts. And for now guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching though guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.